Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about overcoming perfectionism. How to stop being so damn critical of people and life. One of the biggest realizations, one of the biggest personal development realizations that I've had this year occurred for me when I was at a, an enlightenment retreat, and we weren't really working on personal development. We were working on enlightenment stuff and meditation type stuff, but just um, when you do a lot of enlightenment work, what tends to happen is that a lot of emotional baggage and interesting revelatory insights, aha moments come up for you that are like more psychological and therapeutic. And uh, what I discovered there is I, I, I just got this very palpable sense of how hypercritical I am. And that really this is a theme throughout my whole life. It stretches back really far um, to my, my teenage years and maybe even before that. This hypercriticalness, critical of everything. I noticed myself being critical of, of people, of physical objects, of products that I buy, cars on the road, uh, of women, physical appearance of both men and women. Uh, emotions, critical of other people's emotions, critical of my own emotions, critical of situations, standing in line somewhere, or in a traffic jam, stuff like that. So I, I just got a real palpable sense of that. And it made me see like, oh, I'm a perfectionist. That's of course, I'm a perfectionist. And then I also, in addition to that, not just seeing that, but also seeing all the all the ways in which the tentacles of this issue creep into every facet of my life. I saw this. And this made me see like, oh, this needs to really be turned around. Because I cannot go forward to where I want to be in life if I don't turn this around. And it's hard because these are very ingrained habits in us. I noticed in myself that, first of all, the problem is that it just makes me miserable and it saps happiness. So directly it saps happiness because... When you're being critical, you're not happy. It's almost by definition you're angry or you're frustrated or you're upset or you're you're finding a fault with something. So you can't be happy at that point. You're always unhappy. It also wastes mental energy. I notice myself wasting a lot of mental energy throughout the day. Instead of thinking about the things I need to be thinking about, I'm thinking about all this shallow, petty crap, these little nitpicks here and there, which in the end... Uh, just distract me from what I need to be doing. I also noticed that this this hinders my self-actualization. And this, for me, is where I had my big aha moment because yeah, I'm all about self-actualization. Anything that hinders my self-actualization, if I ever become conscious of that, then it's like, oh, wait, okay, I, I got to put the brakes on this one here. So that's what I saw, is I, I saw just how uh, how much it's hindering my self-actualization. Because instead of focusing on the things that I need to be doing, instilling the positive habits that I need to be instilling, thinking the positive thoughts I need to be thinking, and um, creating the positive plans, the concrete practical plans for implementing my life purpose, instead of doing all that, I can get uh, sidetracked into criticism. So that was uh, my aha. And of course, you know, the classic problem with perfectionism and, and criticism is that if you want everything to be perfect especially right off the bat, then you psych yourself out of a lot of situations in life and a lot of projects that you could be starting on. You start to procrastinate on those and you don't even start them and you definitely don't complete them because you expect them to be perfect before they're even begun. And I've certainly uh, suffered from that in the past as well. And I still suffer from that. So the problem with this particular aspect of perfectionism is that it's really, perfectionism is an anti-mastery mindset. And if you follow my work, then you know how seriously I treat mastery. Mastery is a very important concept for me. I think it's one of the most important concepts of all time for successful self-actualization work. You need to learn what mastery is. You need to apply that process to your career and basically to everything that you're trying to master in your life. Mastery process. Mastery process, it's a little too deep to go into here, but basically it means that you focus on the process, mastering the process versus focusing on results. 
And of course, this is exactly the opposite of what a perfectionist does, because a perfectionist always focuses on the results. And so this uh, creates problems. It really hinders our success. Perfectionists hinder their own success. But enough of that for now. That's just my own little personal, you know, quibbles and issues with uh, perfectionism. Let's get into the meat of the topic here. So what actually is perfectionism? I would define it as a neurotic unwillingness to accept reality. So if you're a perfectionist, I am making the claim that you are not willing to accept reality. Now, you might not agree with me on this, but stick with me because um, I'll give you some deeper insights here about why this is. And it is the case. This is the, the root of perfectionism, is really this. It's an unwillingness to accept what actually is true. What is the case? What is the fact? Unwillingness to accept it. And maybe even to such a degree that you're unwilling to accept that you're unwilling to accept reality. There's, a, there's an important book called The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz. And in this book, he makes a, an interesting observation, which is that in modern society, we have a lot more choice than we ever did in prior centuries and millennia uh, that humans evolved. And our brain really isn't designed to cope with so much choice. It's an overabundance of choice. And this choice seems like it's a good thing, you know, have an overabundance of choice. What's wrong with that? But, uh, but there is a problem. He talks about something called maximizers and satisficers. These are two types of people. Two ways of coping with overabundance of choice. The maximizer is also the perfectionist, in a sense. The maximizer is the one, let's say, you want to go buy a new vacuum cleaner. Now, if you go to the store and you want to buy a new vacuum cleaner, there's probably 15 or 20 models, different colors, different cord lengths, different wattages, different amounts of power, different accessories, different boxes, different packages, different prices, different values, different warranties. So you've got all these options. So how do you choose the best one? Well, the maximizer, he says to himself, okay, I need the best vacuum cleaner in the world. What is that? Well, it's not just a matter of uh, literally the best. It also has the best value. So I need to, I need to find the sweet spot between not too expensive, but enough accessories, plus the best warranty, plus the best uh, uh, product design, plus the, the best longest cord and all this stuff, I need to find the perfect sweet spot of all this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare 15 different models, going to do the research, read all the reviews, and I'm going to go and I'm going to shop different stores, and I'm going to compare, and I'm going to do a couple weeks of research, and then I'm going to buy my vacuum cleaner. And he thinks that he's going to become happy this way when he buys that super awesome, perfect vacuum cleaner. Now, the satisficer, what does he do? He walks in there, he's like, well, there's 15 models. I'll just narrow it down to these three. I like this one here. Okay, I'm going to spend five minutes thinking about it, and I'm going to grab it, and let's just go. I'm going to be happy with it. As long as it vacuums the floor and it doesn't break, I'm good. That's the satisficer. So, um, you might think, well, Leo, you know, we don't want to be satisficers. We want to be maximizers, right? Isn't that what self-actualization is all about? It's about getting the most. It's about min-maxing the hell out of life. Not quite. Not quite. It might seem like being the maximizer will get you the maximum of everything, including happiness. But actually, that's not the case. The maximizer isn't really happy. He's constantly disappointed by life because his mind is like the perfectionist's mind. It's always looking for perfect. Sometimes it finds perfect. But a lot of times it doesn't find perfect. And when it doesn't find perfect, it's upset, it's frustrated, and it's not happy. And most of the time, because you've been developing this habit of being hypercritical of everything all the time, you're not happy anymore. You can't be happy because you can find fault with almost everything. You might buy that perfect vacuum cleaner, you come home, and then... Next week, you're browsing online and you see a new ad for a new vacuum cleaner. And you're like, oh, shit. This is better than the one I bought. And it's too late to return this one. Man. Right. And so you're unsatisfied. You're unhappy. Whereas the satisficer, he sees that ad. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, maybe it's a little better. Who cares? I already got my vacuum cleaner. It works. The satisficer is actually the one that's happy. 
Because happiness is about acceptance. You need acceptance. And you're not going to get very far in your self-actualization work if you don't cultivate this ability of acceptance. It's a bit of an uphill battle for me to convince you of this, because I know that a couple of years back, if you started talking to me about acceptance, I would be like, acceptance? What, what are you talking about, Leo? This is like some hippie, woo-woo bullshit. I don't want acceptance. You know, I'm a, I'm a hard-nosed guy. I want results. I want real, tangible things. You know, I'm, I'm oriented towards making money in my business, and I want results in my relationship and all this stuff. Well, <laughs> the thing you got to realize is that you will never, never, ever become happy this way in life. Never, ever. It's not going to work. So I don't know what you need to do to realize that. Maybe my talking about it here will help you help you to see this, maybe get a couple of things to click in your mind. Um, you know, for me, it was that retreat that I took and I was sitting there and I was doing, doing a lot of self, uh, self-inquiry and introspection and, you know, this popped out and I saw that, oh, I'm never going to be happy this way. I really have this problem with being hypercritical, right? And it's just, it's not going to work. It's like I'm, I'm trying to stick a square peg into a round hole. It's just not going to work. So you need to start to come to that kind of realization. By the way, if you're not sure if you are or are not a perfectionist, what I'll have for you at the at the end of this video is I'll have a perfectionist quiz. So I'm going to point you to a link where you can go and you can download a little perfectionist quiz that I created, just one simple worksheet with a couple of questions, like 10 questions on it, and you can see just how much of a problem this is in your life. Might surprise you, because maybe you're not quite sure of just how deep your perfectionism runs. But more on that later. Let's get back into the meat of this. So here's something that was a real epiphany for me at my retreat about perfectionism. Is that perfectionism, this is a key insight right here. Perfectionism is a sneaky form of procrastination. Extremely sneaky, extremely self-deceptive form of procrastination. Most forms of procrastination are pretty obvious. We got to go start work on our dream project, but instead we're going to go clean the house or trim our toenails or, you know, something like that. We procrastinate by doing like <laughs> entertaining stuff, like looking at gossip or tabloids or browsing online, this kind of stuff. Okay, that's obvious procrastination. I talk about that in other places, uh, other videos. But here, this one, this one's real bad because when you're hypercritical, that energy and time that you're using to be hypercritical is time that you should be spending on yourself doing the thing you got to be doing in your life, following your life purpose or whatever other ambitions you might have, right? And so what I saw, my epiphany was that, oh, not only am I hypercritical and that robs me of happiness, but I'm actually using this as a form of procrastination on my life purpose. Oh, now the stakes are even higher than I thought initially. And what I realize is that I'm actually using criticism in a very subtle way to avoid taking responsibility for all the places in my life where I need to be kicking ass. And, you know, it's not like I'm saying here that I'm that I'm this deadbeat slug. I'm, I'm pretty productive. I work a lot. I work pretty hard. And I don't call myself a procrastinator, really. But like I'm saying, this is a subtle thing. This is a subtle form of procrastination, and I'm seeing how it holds me back. It's robbing me of my dreams, in a nutshell. That's what's going on here. Now, one objection you might have is you might say something like, well, Leo, but what if I stop being a perfectionist? I mean, is that kind of what you're advocating here? I stop being a perfectionist, but then if I do that, won't my work suffer? I mean, I've been using my perfectionism to kick ass in business and to get my hot girlfriend or to find the perfect husband. You know, I've been using my perfectionism for all this kind of stuff. I want perfect kids and I want perfect this and perfect that. And I, I got my perfect car and I set up my perfect house. So it's been going good for me, right? Here's the problem with that is that there's a lie. There's a big fat lie lurking in there when you tell yourself this. The lie you tell yourself is that you tell yourself basically that perfectionism is excellence. You equate perfectionism with excellence, right? 
That's where this objection is coming from. But that's not what it really is. That's not what perfectionism is for. And there's a difference between these two. You also have to recognize that what got you here won't necessarily get you to where you ultimately want to go. If you've been driven your whole life by perfectionism and this neurotic thirsting for making everything perfect and for nitpicking everything and being critical with your employees and critical with your children and critical with everything and critical, of course, with yourself. We're going to get that in a minute. Um, if you've been living that way and that's been your sole source of motivation, you're probably going to want to cling to that and you're going to defend that and say, well, Leo, this is where my motivation comes from. But you know what? That's a neurotic form of motivation. And so what will become necessary if you want to go somewhere further in your life? I mean, yeah, it might have gotten you where you are now, but where you are now is not where you can ultimately be. I guarantee you that you're not even at 10% of where you could ultimately be if you really take on this effort of self-actualization. So that means you've got 90% left more growth, right? More potential to tap into. And if you're going to want to tap into that potential, you're going to have to change how you're motivated, what motivates you. I think this is one of the biggest things that holds back successful people, already successful people. You know, a lot of successful people who have earned six figures, I've coached these types of people one-on-one. -on -one, and what I discover is that they have negative or flawed forms of motivation, neurotic motivation. And that's just not going to allow them to reach their full potential. And changing that motivation is a little scary because it might mean like, oh, I'm going to suffer a temporary setback. And then, you know, an ach achievement-oriented, ambitious person doesn't want to suffer a setback. So it's a, little, a bit of a difficult issue. But you also start to see that, you know, after a few years, maybe a decade of this kind of uh, perfectionistic motivation, you start to see that there really are consequences. It really does sabotage itself. It holds itself back. Art is not done for the sake of perfectionism. Art is done for the sake of joy. The joy of creating the thing that you're calling your art. And if you're an ambitious person and you have a life purpose, then you're an artist. I hope you think of yourself as an artist, even if you're doing business and nothing traditionally artsy. You're still an artist in my book. I consider myself an artist. Art is about putting passion into your work, taking your work personally, right? Being highly creative in your work. And that's the kind of work that really matters. That's the kind of work that's really fulfilling. So, if you are an artist, recognize that an artist is not creating something because he's neurotic. And he, I mean, some of them are neurotic, but uh, but because he's neurotic and he, he needs to create this perfect painting or this perfect sculpture or this perfect piece of architecture. Uh, no, the artist gets joy and delight in the process of making art. You see, that there's a difference there. Think about how much more enjoyable your life would be, and also more productive if you actually truly got joy out of the entire process, even the mistakes, even the imperfect stuff. Hmm? Maybe you would accomplish more, not less. But that might require you some work, you know, to make that transition. What needs to happen, if you want to be a really powerful artist, you need to focus your mind on mastery. Focus your mind on the process enjoying the full process, not thinking about outcome. The perfectionist is too attached to outcome. He undermines himself. The mastery process gets corrupted when you do it that way. Right? Gets corrupted. And then you don't get your result one time, and then you get all pissy and bitchy and you want to get depressed and you want to quit and right? That's what happens when you don't get that result, that outcome that you want immediately. That's not what the master does. The master is in it for the long haul. The master is in it because he enjoys the work. The true artist loves the art form. A, a masterful writer loves to write. A masterful painter loves to paint. A masterful sculptor likes to sculpt. Not because he needs to have the perfect painting made or the perfect sculpture to wow the whole world. That's not why. He actually likes the process. He enjoys the medium. So start shifting towards the mastery perspective. Very important. 
But let's go on to another really key insight. This one's also huge. This is one that I had while I was sitting there thinking all this stuff at my, my retreat. And it's this, that criticizing others and criticizing oneself is two sides of the same coin. They're really equal. They're identical. So I can guarantee you this. If you're hypercritical of people, physical objects, and situations in the external world, you're hypercritical also of yourself. And of course, that's exactly how it is with me. Because I'm critical of everything out there, I also hold myself to that same st standard. And so I'm hypercritical about myself. And so here's another facet of this whole problem, is that not only do you kind of hate the world <laughs> as a perfectionist, but more, more importantly, you hate yourself. Deep down, you hate yourself. And you probably set very high standards for yourself. And maybe you've achieved many of those standards and you feel like you're doing pretty good. But also, I would submit to you that deep down, like in the cracks and shadows of your subconscious mind, you actually hate yourself. And you're very hard on yourself. You're very harsh on yourself. You self-flagellate. And you have a uh, secret guilt about all the stuff that you didn't do right because you nitpick everything. You nitpick everyone and then you nitpick yourself. Because once you establish a standard, that standard, you know, your mind will hold you to that same standard too. So that's a key insight to realize. Big insight. When you start to see this, again, it's like, oh yeah, uh, I, I can't let, let this perfectionism stand. Because if I let this perfectionism stand, this is how I'm going to die my life. My, I'm going to die this way. My life is going to end this way. It's just going to be, in, uh, you know, 40 years until I die, let's say. But uh, throughout those 40 years, I'm just going to become more and more and more self-critical. And then at the very end of my life, what's going to happen is that I'm going to look back at my life and I'm going to nitpick the shit out of it. And I'm going to tell myself, oh, I wasn't perfect. I, I, I hate my life. I regret my life. My wife wasn't perfect, my kids weren't perfect, my job wasn't perfect, my health wasn't perfect, and now my death is not perfect. That's what's going to happen to you. So unless you want to face that fate, then uh, I think it's time to talk about a solution. So what is the solution to this? Well, I think a really big important component of it is just simply the realization of how much damage you're causing to yourself. How much you're holding yourself back. It's like that old analogy of uh, the high-performance sports car, which uh, is going 100 miles an hour, but the parking brake is, is on. Right? Um, how much better could it do if the parking brake was off? And a lot of times, that's how we justify some of our neurotic behaviors, and we, we keep them in places. We say, well, but Leo, you know, I'm, I'm successful on it. I'm ambitious. I mean, I'm a perfectionist, but I've been doing good for myself. Yes. Perhaps you have, but I'm talking about the next level for you. Imagine the next level. What if we took the parking brake off? Imagine how well you would do then. Hmm? Can you believe that there is a next level for you? Even very successful people have habits and behaviors, especially internal mindset things that, uh, that are like parking brakes that have been uh, on the whole time in their life. And they've succeeded despite it, but man, they could go much further. So part one of the solution is just realizing. Maybe watch this video a couple of times. Really listen to it. Really think about it. Start to notice. Take the quiz that I'm going to give you at the end. You know, really start to take a look at how you're robbing yourself of, of happiness and material achievements. Second step is start to notice how critical you actually are. This is going to be eye-opening for you, too. Because right now, maybe you have some idea in your mind of like, oh, yeah, you know, Leo, I know how critical I am. You know, I do criticize a lot of things throughout the day. Okay, that's good. But when you actually take a, a close look, let's say starting tomorrow, you start to take a real close look at how much criticism you do in your life on a daily basis. You're going to notice like, oh, it's, uh, it's 10 times worse than I thought it was. This problem is 10 times bigger. I, I, I've only seen the tip of the iceberg here. The rest of the iceberg is, is still yet to be discovered down below the water. So that's going to be step two. So that's going to take your realization. It's going to even blow it up even further. It's going to be like, holy shit, this is a real problem. 
Good. That's going to motivate you to change, right? The third step is to start to retrain yourself. You need to retrain your mental filter. That's the problem. You have a mental filter right now in your mind, like this lens that you're looking through at the world. And this lens is telling you, find perfect, nitpick everything. You know, when I'm driving down the road, you know, I'll, I'll nitpick even stupid stuff like a car that I don't like. Some design of a car, like, oh, that's an ugly Chevy. That's like an ugly Ford. Like, who designed this car? Who would buy this car? And then I start going down the road, like, why, why would they design it this way? Why didn't they just, like, tweak the bumper this way? And why didn't they change the headlights this way? Right? That's what I'm talking about here. This, this subtle criticism. And you do this with everything. I mean, you do this with people. You do this with physical appearance of stuff. You do this with physical objects. You might buy something and you might be critical about it. You might do this with the meal that you order. You might go buy a cheeseburger and then you look at it and then you're eating it. And yeah, it's a pretty good cheeseburger. But then you nitpick something. It's like, oh, they forgot the pickles or some, you know, the fries. They gave me five less French fries than they should have. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, so start to notice that. And then uh, retrain yourself. Retrain yourself to let go and accept. You got to accept these things. Life is not about min-maxing everything. This is not an RPG game. Life is about enjoying it. Accepting it. Being cool with it. Even when it's not perfect. See, the thing is, the original point that I talked about is that you do not want to accept reality. That's the fundamental neurosis that you have. You don't like reality as it is. You have your fantasies about reality. And then you insist that that's how it has to be. It has to be like my fantasy. But the fact is that it, life is not like a fantasy. Life is life. It is exactly what it is. So if you got five less french fries than you deserved, that's what happened. That's the truth. That's reality. Can you be uh, man enough to accept it? Do you have the balls to accept it? It takes courage to accept these things takes courage. And at first, it's going to be like, you're going to be like a, a drug addict coming off of an addiction. It's going to be like, no, I want to criticize. I want to criticize. And then you got to retrain your mind to just say, okay, let me just let go of those French fries. I don't need those five French fries. Probably better for me in the long run. You know, it's better that I didn't eat those five French fries. Helps my health. Um, but then your mind's going to be like, no, I need those French fries. First of all, let me go complain about the five French fries that they didn't give me. And you got Practice acceptance. Yeah, it's kind of a hippie concept, acceptance. For a perfectionist, that's a very foreign concept. Foreign concept for me, it's hard. Meditation's a real good habit. You know, if you really want to practice this, practice meditation. Practice enlightenment work. Those are some great tips. But I'll give you even a more uh, concrete exercise that you're going to do here. You can do those things, but at the very minimum, do this. You're going to get a rubber band for your wrist such as this right here. See this? Rubber band. You're going to put it around your wrist, and you're going to wear it for one month every single day. You're basically not going to take it off. You're going to shower with it. You're going to sleep with it. You're going to eat with it. You're going to keep this thing on for a whole month. And you're basically going to do a one-month, 30-day challenge of no criticism. This is my no criticism challenge. So I'm actually in the middle of my challenge right now. I've been doing it for about a week. Uh, it's been working qu quite well. So what I do is I just notice throughout the day whether I'm being critical. And any time that I see that I am being critical and I hear my inner voice being critical in any kind of fashion, small or big, what I do is I snap this sucker. Snap it and tell yourself the following. It's like a little mantra that I have. My mantra is this. When I criticize, I rob myself of my future. Because that's literally what you're doing. When you're criticizing, no matter for what little reason, that's energy that you're wasting. And you're not taking responsibility for doing the things you got to do to advance your life. Criticism does not advance your life. All right? So that's going to be your assignment. You're going to go and do that. Get yourself a nice rubber band. Get a rubber band that actually isn't too tight on your wrist so you can wear it all day long. That's important. If you get a really tight rubber band, it's going to cut off circulation to your hand and you're going to 
take it off pretty quick. All right? And just keep going with it. Keep going with it week after week after week. This is what is the retraining, right? The reason this exercise is so important is because this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you actually retrain your, your mind and you change that lens through which you see the world. And instead, practice acceptance. Just accept what is. Accept life. See the beauty of life. Be grateful for life. You know, practice any of those right there. And what do you think about? Instead of critical stuff, you think about what are my dreams? What are my goals? What's my life purpose? How can I take more action towards it? Where could I, uh, you know, where could I get more creative ideas? Who could I talk to who's going to advance my, my career? And so on and so forth. Spend more time with the kids. Spend more time with your intimate relationship, whatever. Spend more time with friends. That kind of stuff. And then lastly, go and uh, check out the uh, perfectionist quiz. I'm going to have uh, a link to it down below. It's going to have some questions there that will help you to see just how uh, bad of a problem this might be for you. All right, that's it. I'm signing off. Go ahead, post me your comments down below. Click the like button, please. Share this video with a friend and come check out actualize.org right here. This is my newsletter. You can go find it there. It's a free newsletter. Stay tuned with weekly updates. I release new videos on self-actualization topics every single week. They're free. Stay on board. Do the exercises that I give you every single week. Learn these concepts. These are concepts that you need to master life. These are not just theories. This is not just philosophy. I study this stuff. This is what I do. This is what my whole day and my whole life consists of, is basically studying the best, most practical, most important concepts that I need, personally, that I need to master my life, to get the most fulfilling, rewarding life that I could possibly create. So whatever those concepts I discover are, I come and I share them. Most of them I share for free with a lot of depth. These concepts are so powerful. This is not just like going to school. When you're at school, they teach you a bunch of irrelevant crap. This stuff here is extremely practical. When you start applying this stuff, this starts changing how you see life, starts changing your mood, starts changing your thought patterns, start changing your practical daily habits, start changing how you do business, how you hang out with your girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife or your kids. This is extremely practical stuff. And when you stay on board and you just do this weekly with me, in a few years, your life is going to transform. And in a decade or two, it will really transform. And you can get to levels that you wouldn't have even imagined are possible. This is not easy work. This is challenging work. It's not easy to retrain your mind over the course of a month to think about your life purpose instead of thinking about negative stuff, right? That's not easy to do. Most people are too lazy to do that. I'm not here giving you magic pills. What I want to convince you of is that there's enough reward here to do this work. In fact, there's so much reward in doing self-actualization work that the initial investment you're going to do of having to spend time watching this stuff and doing some of these exercises and going through some of the emotional labor involved, um, that's going to be all paid off uh, tenfold, a hundredfold if you just keep going with it. You're going to start getting exponential results as you keep going, right? But at first, it's kind of slow going. Your first year is going to be a little slow going. You can still get some results. But you're going to fall off track, most likely. So really, the mission of Actualize.org is to keep you on track for a long time to come. How do you stay on track with this stuff, with self-actualization work, for years and for decades? Imagine the potential that that would have for you. And it doesn't take that much. A couple hours a week. That's all you need to start with, right? It'll start to build its own momentum. So if you think that's a good idea, then stay with me. I'm self-actualizing. I'm excited to share my deepest insights with you as I'm on my journey, and I hope that you get on board with your journey. All right? Sign up, stay tuned, and I'll see you soon.